we, this last time we took a look at domain and range. So to do these, again, we're going to be graphing these on um, Desmos graphing calculator. So let me just bring that up really quickly. Okay, so there's Desmos graphing calculator. So again, uh, when we're reviewing how to do uh, graphing equations uh, that are exponential and looking for dom domain and range. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get this, uh, we wanna see what it looks like, right? So I'm gonna type this in. So this looks like it's Y equals here, and I can make this a bit bigger, can't I? That's hard to see here. Let's get rid of this. Okay, we're gonna be taking a look at exponential growth today. Um, all right, so I'm gonna type this in. So I have negative two and then parentheses three. And then I'm gonna take that. Remember the keyboard is down here, right? So I'm gonna hit A to the B. So I'm gonna be, my cursor now is up here. So I'm gonna type, uh, and I think I have to do parentheses. I don't know if I do here. If I go X, well, oops. Yeah, it won't, it won't let me do plus, will it? So I'm gonna have to do parentheses, X plus two. Okay, so we're gonna have to add parentheses up there to let us do it or else the software doesn't let us type up there. So I just went ahead and added parentheses up here so that I could get it all up there. And then it looks like minus one, okay? So again, with the, the exponent up top, I just had to add parentheses around it to let me type everything so it was up top. So then I get this graph, okay? It looks like, so what I'm gonna be looking for is I'm looking for domain. So let's see here, oops. Of course I'm on freeze, so that makes it so you can't see. There we go. So I want domain and I want range, okay? So domain is what works on the X input, right? It what It's what works to left to right. Well, domain for these is always gonna be all real numbers. So you can think of it as like a, a free, a freebie, a free, a free points, right? So all real numbers. That is, if you take a look at this, there is nowhere where the input doesn't work, right? So for every input, there is a red dot, right? In fact, there's so many red dots, it looks like a straight line, okay? So that's what domain is, is that I can plug any number in for X and get an output, right? There's no number I can't plug in for X. We can, we can think of any number that you can imagine. The range on the other hand is a little bit more difficult. So remember the range is up and down. So the key, if you guys remember from last class, if, if we wanna look at here, we wanna say, what is it approaching, right? So if I go here, can you guys type into chat and, and looking at this function, what is this a, a function approaching right as we go to the left here? What's the function approaching? What's the output? What number is the output going to? What do we see on the screen? or your screen. So in chat, just tell me, uh, ooh, be careful about the sign on that, right? So what, what is it approaching, guys? So as I go to the left, as you can see here, right? What is the output approaching? And there is, there's about 14, 15 of you guys in here. I should be getting all of you participating. So again, we graph this equation. And as I go, what is it, what value is it approaching? You guys can type this into the chat. Yeah, yeah, that second one's better. All right, guys, I need more people typing this into chat. You have to participate to learn. So as we go here, what is this function approaching? If you have a question, you can ask a question. If you're like, Kreft, I don't know what you're saying. You can do that too. But for right now, I don't even know if you guys are there. So. Again, as we go here, what is the output approaching? Look at the number there. What is it approaching? Okay, so that's that's fine. So when we click, right? So let's take a little notes here in the margin. When we click, we get a point X, Y, right? X is our input, Y is our output. So when we're looking for range, we're looking for output. Okay, so when I click, when you click, when we click, right, you see how there's two numbers. That first number is our input, right? And that corresponds to the X axis. So right here, it says negative five. So if I click right underneath it, I should have an input of about negative five, okay? 
that second number, that's our output. So notice how I'm, my second number is getting more negative as I go down, right? Because the further I go down, my output is more negative. So what we're looking for is we're looking for range. So I want to know as I go left, what is my output? What's that second number? What's it approaching? What number do you guys see that second number is going to? Okay, so, and, and, and guys, you should have this window open too. I have like 16 people in here. Okay, so the first number, the first number is your input. The second number is your output. So we're trying to figure out what is our output? What number is our output going to? So as I, as I scroll here, I'm looking at all these different points. What is our output at? Yeah, okay, so I'm starting to get some people getting there, right? So our second number is our output. What do you guys see as our second number approaching? Right, so, and you guys have this on your own screen, right? Yeah, right, guys, yes, you don't need to put a question mark there, right? What what number do we see, right? Um, it looks like only our input is changing, right? As we go left, our input is changing, and that makes sense because input is left to right but our output is staying at negative one, right? So that's what this is telling us. It's telling us that as we go left here, it's approaching negative one. Now we talked about this last time, right? Even though it says negative one, it's not actually negative one. And if you zoom in, you can see that it's no longer negative one, right? It's rounding. And that's what we talked about last time. And that's what's really important and why I'm going over it again this time. Okay, we're looking at what is it approaching. So the range is approaching negative one. But take a look, it's not actually going to ever equal negative one. And then everything else is below negative one. It's less than negative one. So my range then is my Y, my output is less than negative one. Okay, that is everything on this graph is less than negative one. Okay, it is less than negative one. So it seems like we're still struggling with this. So I'm really glad we're doing this as a warm up. And remember, if you guys need help with your homework, you can always come to my office hours and we can talk about it. But that's what's going on here. It looks like the highest this function output attains is negative one. Everything else is below negative one. So when we say range, we're saying output, and we're saying the output is always less than negative one or below negative one. All right, let's do this next one. Okay, so for this next one, we're gonna find domain and we're gonna find range we're gonna remember that a point is x, y, where the x is the input, right? Input, oops, that's not on the screen. Input is with domain. And then the y is the output. And output is with range. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to type this function in. Now notice how it says f of x you can type in f of x into Desmos. You don't need to have it typed in as y. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna go 0 0.25, oops, I clicked on letting someone in and I didn't click on that. So I'm typing this exactly how I see it. Oops, I put a zero here, didn't I? There we go. And then I'm gonna hit, I have this little keyboard down here, right? I hit the keyboard, I hit A to the B, I'm gonna hit X and then I go back down plus three. Okay, so that looks like the equation we have. So I'm gonna look at this. So this equation, this exponential looks a little bit different, right? So what we're going to do, notice as in this case to the left, it keeps going up. But then on the right, do you guys see how it approaches something? So I wanna see what it approaches. So I click on the line and I get those two numbers. The first one is my input, the second one is my output. 
So as I go to the right here, what number for our output are we approaching? Type it into the chat. What number are we approaching? Yeah, okay. And I, and I should get, come on guys, everyone should be typing this in because you gotta make sure that you can do this. So again, what is our output approaching? And guys, this is looking better already, right? So I'm glad that we did this warm up, uh, right? So the first number, our input is changing as we go left to right, because that's what the input is, left to right. But it looks like my output, right, is approaching three. So the domain is always gonna be all real numbers for exponents, all real numbers. And our range here is gonna be, now take a look at this graph right? It looks like everything is above what I'm approaching. Do you guys see that? How everything is above. So if it's above, that's going to be y is greater than uh, three. Okay. So all of my outputs are greater than three. All right. Hey, that's a pretty important skill that we were just talking about there. Um, so uh, let's make sure guys that if you have questions about that or you need help with your homework that I would love to help you with your homework and get through that. You just have to let me know and we can figure that out, okay? All right, so this is tidying up what we did last class. Does anybody have questions? Okay, so we're so for this for this next three classes, we're gonna focus. We're gonna keep focusing on exponentials, but we're going to focus on another part of exponentials. So a big part about exponentials is growth and decay. So we're gonna talk about exponential growth for the next three classes. Now, exponential growth is really important, okay? That's how banks work. That's how investments work. If you ever have a job that has a retirement plan, this is how it works. Anytime you have things to do with financial, exponential growth is what we're talking about. Uh, life, so biology, uh, any life form that reproduces, reproduces with exponential, exponentially, usually exponential growth. Right. So if you think about, um, I don't know, let's talk about bunnies. So two bunnies have offspring. If they have more offspring, if they have more than two offspring, right, they're exponentially growing, right? Because then those offspring have kids and then those offspring have kids and they're multiplying. So exponential growth is really important. Exponentials happen in finance. They happen in biology. They happen all over. And if you guys are going to be successful with your finances growing up, you have to have at least a basic understanding of how exponential growth and decay works. And that's why we're going to look at this. Okay. Because there's, I just said like all these, like, you know, good things about exponential growth, but a bad thing about exponential growth is like credit cards, right? If you get a credit card and it tells you a percentage that you will pay if you miss your payment, that's really important, right? Because whenever you get a loan from a bank or whenever you get a payday advanced or a credit card, it's gonna tell you what the percentage is. It's usually called an APR, okay? And, 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 and if you don't know what that is, this is really important because that's how much they're gonna charge you. So, and we'll talk about this because as you've seen with exponential growth, it really takes off, doesn't it? It's not linear. Like as more time goes on, it's really like getting really large, really quick. And that's what happens with credit and loans that if you aren't paying them down, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and you'll never be able to pay it off. Okay. So that's why we're learning about this really important stuff. So with exponential growth, there's a couple of things that we're going to focus on and we're going to be really focused with what we're doing so that you guys uh, aren't overwhelmed by this. Okay. So exponential growth has kind of a base function. There's lots of different types of functions for exponential growth, but we're just going to look at one. We're going to focus on it and it's going to be our basic one. So we're going to have 
y equals, and I'm going to write it nice and big because I'm going to explain everything in it, and then a, and then times 1 plus r, oops, that's an r, not a v, you know, r, uh, and then to the t power. Okay, this is going to be for us, this is going to be our base for exponential growth. So let me go through and let's talk about what do each of these things mean for exponential growth. Okay, yes, y is going to be your output, but uh, it's also going to mean our final amount. Okay, so if I was talking about bunnies, right, y would represent after so much time, how many bunnies do I have? Or if I'm talking about money, I'm going to be like, how much money do I have after a certain amount? Or if I was talking about credit cards, how much money do I owe after a certain amount of time? Okay, so this is our final amount. It is also our output. Okay, so again, output was really important. And I know, uh, uh, right, a lot of you guys forgot about output because when we were doing that graph, you're like, what am I looking for? Remember, the output is up and down on a graph, right? That's our y-axis. Okay. The a, I should switch up colors here so they're different. The a here is our initial amount. Now, if you're not comfortable with, comfortable with the word initial, you can think start. This is our starting amount. It's just in math, we call it the initial. And in science, we call it the initial as well. So it's our start amount, okay? So initial amount is how much did you start with? Right, so if we're talking about money, that's like how much money did you put into your bank? How much money did you put onto your credit card? How much money did you take out for a loan? If we're talking about biology, it's like how many species, how many bunnies did we start out with, right? Or if I'm talking about uh, lily pads on a lake, I'm talking how many lily pads did I start with? If I'm talking about mold, uh, mold in my attic, how much mold did I start with? right and how because mold is something that grows exponentially as well i could be talking about the virus right the covid virus how many covid cases do i have right oh my gosh why didn't i think to talk about covid right so how many covid cases do i have and then this is after a certain amount of time how many covid cases i have now okay so and then this is a constant Right, so this is a constant. You can't change this, right? So, uh, and what I mean by constant is, is right, like you have an initial amount, that's not gonna change. That your initial amount is your initial amount, okay? Then the one, and we'll talk about, oh, the one here, that stands for 100%. Okay. So the one stands for 100%, and I'm gonna explain that more in just a little bit, okay? Because, well, let's talk about it now, because if I'm gonna have growth, then I need to have more than 100%. So for example, uh, just as a side thing, what's A times one? A times one is A, anything times one is itself, right? So that's just, this one here represents I keep my initial value. Does that make sense? So for growth, I'm going to have 100% plus my rate of growth. Okay. So this is how much This is our bait. This is how much we're, how much we are changing by.
Okay. This will always be in decimal form. Okay, so this will always be a decimal. And I think that's where we're going to have the most confusion is going between decimals and percentages, right? Because one is actually a decimal of, um, I'm, I'm going to say rate of growth and then I'm going to say percent. Okay, but it's always going to be written as decimal, not as percentages. And we'll show you what that means in a second. And T, T stands for time and it is our input. Right, that's our left to right. That's what's changing time. As time happens, what's gonna happen to my initial amount? Am I gonna get more? Am I gonna get less? Well, we're talking about getting more, okay? So let's just do a couple of examples of this and then we're gonna talk about what's happening, okay? But that's it, that's our, ba that's our base. This is what we're talking about today. We're talking about exponential growth, we're talking about, we're gonna have some initial amount times, right? One plus our rate of growth, right? So it's plus, so we're because that means we're growing, right? So we're gonna have one plus. So the one, remember, A times one is A. So it's gonna be A plus our rate of growth. That's what the one means. So A times one, right? You can think of that as just being A staying, and then I have plus some percentage of A. And then that's gonna happen T times. So let's take a look at an example. So let's say I have, let's say I have this. Let's say I have y equals 2000 times one plus 0 0.08 to the t. So let's identify everything that's in here, okay, together. And if you guys have questions, let me know. So right here, the Y is my final amount. 2,000 is my initial amount. Okay, that one here, that's my, that's my 100%. This right here is my is my growth okay so 0 0.008 so multiply multiply by a hundred to get percent okay so we want to see that as a percent so take a look. So if I take this times 100, I get my percentage. So 0 0.08 times 100. And a, a quick trick, a way to do this without a calculator, see how there's two zeros here? It's gonna move that decimal place over one, two. So if I go like that, I get eight. So what this means is that my growth rate is 8%. Okay, so you take this number and you multiply by 100 to get your percentage. Okay, so I have 0 0.08, that is 8%. Okay, and then T here, T is my time, right? That's my input. All right, and you would graph this just like we would before, right? You could find domain and range just like we could before, um, right? And we can plug in a value for here and get a Y just like we did before. Yeah, and guys, we are starting really easily. And, on, and what we're gonna be really focusing on today, because we're gonna spend three days on this, is we're just gonna look at this and we're gonna be like, okay, how do we find things? 
okay what is it how do we find it what does it mean because if we don't know what it means or how to find it, how the heck can we do anything with it, right? So that's what we're gonna focus on today, okay? Now, I want you to know, so I'm gonna write the same equation. Do you see how it says one plus 0 0.18? Well, you might ask, well, why don't they just add these together? So we're gonna get, that's gonna get complicated here. So I'm gonna write the same thing underneath it. I'm gonna get, 1.08 to the t. These are the same. Okay, do you guys see the only difference between these two is they did 1 plus 0 0.08 and they got this. Now what happens is when it's like this, it's not as easy to see what the growth rate is. Because in this form, do you guys see how the growth rate is by itself? All you have to do is multiply by 100 and you're good to go, okay? But if it's like here, then we're gonna have to have an extra step of like, okay, how do I find the growth rate? Because the growth rate isn't 100, and, well, I mean, it is 108%. But remember this one here is just, you keep your original amount, right? 2000 times one is 2000 but then we're gonna add this additional 8%, right? So this reads 108%, right? So this right here reads 108%. That is an 8% growth. Right, so again, this reads as 108%. That's an 8% growth because one times 2000 is 2000. Okay. And that's what's going on there. Right. Another way to think about this, and I just want to, cause I really want to make sure you go, if this was one, let's say you put money into the bank, you put in $2,000 into the bank. If you multiplied it by one, if that was your rate, that means you got back all the money you put in, okay? Or like, let's say, right? Like, so if, if my rate was one or a hundred, right? So we're talking about a hundred percent. If you want to talk about it in terms of percent, then 2000 at a hundred percent means I get a hundred percent of my money back, okay? But if it's 108% back, I get 100% of my money back plus an additional 8%, okay? So this is the way that you can think about this, right? So when I say 1.08, I'm getting 100% of my initial money back plus, right, plus 8%, okay? So that's how investments work. You guys might have heard about like people fighting the man and, and taking on GameStop. Maybe you heard that in the news, right? So this is what they're doing. They put in a certain amount of money. They got 100% of it back plus an additional amount. Okay. All right. So that's the basic. We're, again, we're just going the basics. So let's try another one and see if we can't, uh, we can't do that. So here's our second example. Let's say I have f of x equals, uh, let's say 180 times 1.27 to the t. So now I want to know what is the rate of growth? Okay, and then one more question, because this is also going to be on your homework. What is the initial amount? Okay, so on your homework, it's going to ask you it's going to ask you these things. Ooh, and then the last one it's gonna say, evaluate Okay, 
So in your homework, you're going to do three things. So we'll go over all of these three things. So we're going to find out what is the rate of growth, what is the initial amount, and we're going to evaluate when t equals 5. Okay. So for these first two, we're going to be looking at our equation. For this last one, we're going to use a calculator. Okay. So let's take a look at this first one. What is the rate of growth? Well, we can think of this, right, this right here is the same as 1 plus 0 0.27. Does that make sense, guys? So right there, see how it says plus? We know it's growth because we're going to spend time after this talking about decay, right, when it's not growth, when you lose. So we know we're, we're growing because I'm adding, right? It's above 1. It's above 100%. I'm getting more than 100% back, okay? So, and then to get my growth, right? I don't want to write my growth, so I write it as a decimal here, but I'm going to write it as a fraction here, right? I'm going to multiply by 100. I'm going to multiply by 100 to get my percent. So I grab my calculator and I say, okay, 0 0.27. Now, again, some of you are going to be like, I don't want to use a calculator all the time. Whenever you multiply by 100, see how there's two zeros? It's going to shift that decimal place over 1, 2. Okay? So, and that's a quick, if you get good at that, then you don't have to use the calculator. You could just say, oh, I'm just moving that decimal place over. So my growth rate is 27%. Okay, and I'm going to hit pause for a second. Does anybody have questions about that? So what is the rate of growth? It is 27%. So I'm looking at the base, right? Sometimes it's easy if I split it up, right? So I'm getting 100% back plus this 0.27. Hey, and if you guys are getting it, this is really good, right? But I want to make sure I'm trying to break this down in an easy way for you guys. So I have 1 plus 0 0.27. And I have 27%. Okay. All right. So then, now let's do initial amount. So for the initial amount, right, I'm just looking at the, the, this constant number in front. So this constant number is 180. That's it, right? So the initial amount, that's it. You're just looking at that number. There's no tricks. There's no thrills. That's it. That's the easy one, right? You just have to know that that's the initial amount, okay? And thank you guys for responding. Uh, remember, every time you guys communicate with me, the better I can make this for you, right? The more I know how you're doing, the more I can make this work for you, right? So thank you. I appreciate that. So I have 20% and I have 180. Now, to evaluate this at t equals 5, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take my function, right? So in function notation, this would be f of 5. Oops, this should have been a t, shouldn't it? f of t, right? That's my input. f of 5 equals 180 times 1.27 to the fifth. Now remember, I know some of you don't like function notation. That's not what we're typing into our calculator. This is just to remember what am I doing? And I'm plugging, all it's saying is, do you see how this is inside the parentheses? I'm plugging in five. That's all this is telling us on the left. So don't freak out about this on the left. I'm just plugging in five. What I do wanna worry about is in my calculator, I wanna type this in. So. On, my, on your calculator or on Desmos, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to type this in exactly. I have 180 parentheses, 1.27, and then to the uh, 5. Okay. And we double check, right? Did I type that in correctly? Sure looks like it. And then I hit enter, and I get this number. Now, in your homework, 
it's going to ask you to round to the nearest tenth. Okay, the nearest tenth is the first decimal place. So we're going to round to the first decimal place. So I look at this first decimal place. This is the tenth. So it goes tens, hundreds, thousands. Just remember with decimals, you skip the first place, right? Because in, this is the first, the ones, then it goes tens, then it goes hundreds. When we go to decimals, there is no ones. It goes tens, hundreds, thousands. So tenths is the first place, okay? So we go to the point next to it and we say, is it five or higher? Yep, nine is five or higher. So I'm gonna round this up. So I'm gonna get f of five equals 594.7, right? This is the tenths. Okay, tenths, T-E-N-T-H-S, tenths. All right, I'm gonna have you guys, um, now just a second, I have to double check something here. Okay, so we have one more thing we have to practice before I'm gonna have you guys practice these. Uh, we have to, so this example, right, we were given an equation, we answered these. The next thing that you're gonna have to be able to do is if I give you some information, can you write an equation? Okay, so let's practice that. All right. So uh, let's practice that. So for an example of this, let's say uh, you invest $1,000. You invest $1,000 at a rate of, uh, let's do 8%. So you invest $1,000 at a rate of 8%. Okay. Ooh, I should say a rate of 8% each year. Now we're always gonna be dealing with years Right, but just know that there does exist, like credit cards sometimes give you interest rate per month, as in they're charging you 8% per month or week. And that's why you gotta be really careful with credit cards because they're gonna try to get the most money out of you possible. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write an equation. So what I like to do, especially when I'm first learning something, I always wanna start out by writing the formula. Right, so this is the formula that we're looking at. I always like to write that down because one, it helps me focus, and then two, by writing it down, it helps me remember it. Okay, right, because it's repetition. So I have y equals a times the quantity of one plus r to the t. Okay, so let's take a look here. Y is my output, so that's gonna stay. A is my initial amount, so what's my initial amount? Can you guys type that into chat so I can make sure you guys are following along? What's my initial amount? So A is my, my initial amount. How much though? How much is my initial amount? There we go, yeah, 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 thanks guys. So I got four replies, so four of you guys are paying attention. How about the rest of us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey guys, this isn't good if, if, the, if the majority of you guys aren't paying attention, right? Okay, well, I don't have time. I don't, I mean, we don't have time to do this, guys, but it seems like a lot of you guys aren't paying attention and aren't following along, okay? So, A is my initial amount. We have $1,000, right? And if you, <coughs> if you had to guess, guys, right, that's the only number it gives us, right? So, if you had to guess, that's our only number. So, when I go to write this, I'm gonna get Y equals, my initial amount is 1,000, Okay. Now, here's the tricky part. Now, this is where it's going to be a little bit different. I have to put 8% in here, right? But R is a decimal. So to remember, to get a decimal to this, we multiplied by 100. Well, now we're going to have to do the opposite. So to get this to a decimal, 
we're going to have to divide by 100, right? It's the opposite of what we just did. Oops, I should probably finish spelling decimal. It's the opposite of what we just did. And absolutely, what you just said in chat, absolutely. So if I take 8%, <coughs> sorry, I'm sneezing. If I take 8% and I divide it by 100, I get what it is as a decimal. That is 0 0.08, okay? So that is 0 0.08, okay? So if you have a, des uh, a, a percentage, to get it to a decimal, you divide. If you have a decimal to go the other way, you multiply, right? So you do the opposite. So I'm going to write this as 1 plus 0 0.08 to the t. Okay. Now, this looks great, right? It looks just like this. Sometimes you can see it written like this. 1,000 1.08 T. These are the same. The difference here is they're separate. And you're like, well, why, why are they different? Well, this one's nice because you can see what your growth rate is. This one's nice because you don't have to type as much into your calculator. Okay, and that's really it, right? So this one is simplified. It doesn't have as much going on. This one, it's easier to see what the rate of growth is. All right, we don't have a lot of time yet. We need to practice these. You need to practice these. And that's this is your, your homework assignment is only four problems. You're gonna do two of each. So uh, before we leave, let's do one of each, okay? So let's start with this one because I think it's the hardest one, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you, uh, an, um, I'm gonna give you, uh, a problem. So here we go. Um, you start with 10 um, bunnies. And oops, you start at a rate of 10 bunnies. They um, grow at a rate of 7% each year. And when I say grow, I mean they breed, right? I should have said breed, right? Or they have children, right? Okay, but grow, I'm just using grow because I'm trying to emphasize the word grow. But when I say grow, I mean they're breeding, they're having kids, okay? Their population is increasing. Okay, I want you guys to write an equation. Okay, now remember your equation, it looks like this. So go ahead, write an equation. You don't need to type it down in chat, but what's important is that you're doing it, right? That you do it, you try it, and then if you don't get the right answer, that we talk and communicate and figure out what we did wrong. Okay, so you start with 10 bunnies, they grow at a rate of 7% each year. Okay, let's just write an equation. And that's all we're doing today, we're writing the equation. We're going to do more with this as as the uh, as the next class. Okay, so what you're doing is you're taking this information in black and you're putting it into this equation so that we have an equation, right? We're taking a word problem, we're taking a real life problem, and then we're putting it into an equation. All right, so hopefully, oh my gosh, like that is that is so incredibly wonderful. Like I almost want to cry how happy I am. You type that into your thing wonderfully. Now, just uh, one thing, right? If you guys want to type this on a keyboard, 
right? You use this button to, uh, and that's shift six to show that the T is going up top. So, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, okay? Uh, but yeah, you would have Y equals, my initial amount is 10. I, I keep 100% of that 10 and I'm adding 0 0.07 to the T. Right, and to write this on a on a uh, on your keyboard, you would write it like this. Like that. Yeah, no, of course you guys got that. Like that's that's what I'm trying to say. And I and 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 and, and I know you guys can do this. But what I really want to hear is I mean, I do want to hear that you guys are getting it. That's also good. I appreciate the feedback. I shouldn't say that. What I want to say is is anybody is anybody getting stuck? Like, are we getting stuck to get this, right? I took 7%, I divided by 100, right? To get the, oops, I should point, right? To get this. Okay. All right, so, hey, and if you guys are getting this, this makes me so happy. This is wonderful, guys. Like, I, I want you guys to do well. I want your homework to be easy. I don't want you spending a lot of time on it. Hey, speaking of which, make sure you guys are doing your homework. And if you guys need help, let me know. Um, also, if you guys haven't, some of you haven't finished. Uh, so we divide by 100 when you start with uh, a percentage and you're going to a decimal. So we'll see in our next example, if you're going the opposite way, you do the opposite. You multiply. Okay. But the 100 is 100%, right? So if you, div if you divide by 100, you get a decimal. Okay. So yeah, we'll do another one. Uh, and, and as I was saying, guys, some of you haven't finished your midterm yet. You still need to go in and do your midterm, okay? If you have issues or if anything is up, just communicate with me and we'll find a solution, okay? Okay, here's our last example for the day. Uh, I'm going to give you an equation and then I'm going to have you guys tell me some stuff. So our equation is y equals, uh, let's do um, 27 times 1 point one six to the t so you're going to do three things i want to know the initial amount what is the initial amount and then b what is the rate of growth Oh, and just to be super clear, we know this is growth because you see how it's greater than one, right? So I'm getting more than 100% back. That's how we know it's growth. See how it's one point something? It's greater than one, so I'm getting back more than 100%. And then C, evaluate uh, at T equals three. Okay, so you're going to do three things. So write down growth, right? And this is going to be as a percentage. And then plug that into your calculator. Okay, and, and hey guys, we are getting to the end of class. And so I know some of you need a little bit more time, but I, I, need to, I need to respect your time and I need to go over this. So the initial amount, that's 27. Okay, now this isn't a word problem, right? So it could be like $27, 27 animals, right? 27 people, it's 27. Okay, what is the rate of growth? Now the rate of growth here, right? 
we can write this as 1 plus 0 0.16. So we want to take this 0 0.16. We want to multiply by 100. And that gives us, right, it's going to move the decimal place over twice, but you can do that in your calculator. That is 16% growth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then to evaluate this, I'm going to type this in really quickly, and I'm sorry that we're going over just a little bit. Sorry about that. Right, so 27 times 1.6, and then I go to the, and I'm going to go 3. Oop, I should put, I always, when you substitute, you should always put parentheses. All right, and, you, and we get 42, and then I'm going to round it to that first decimal place. So this is not 5 or higher, so I just leave it at 1, like that. Okay, uh, so with that said, that is the end of our lesson.